Come on, lift it up in the room. Say the word is your name. Sweet Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. Worthy is your name. Come on, if you know this is worthy. Come on, keep singing. Say, Jesus. Said you deserve our praise. And worthy. And worthy is, said worthy is your name, said worthy is your name, said worthy is your name, said worthy is your, said worthy is your name, said holy is your name, said holy is your name, said holy. Say Jesus is your name. Say Jesus is. Jesus is your name. Provider is your name. Savior is your name. Ruler is your name. Forgiver is your name. Faithful is your name. Said Jesus, you deserve and worthy is your name. You deserve, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Yeah. Hello. Sit high. 
time I promise I'm getting out of the way, Jesus. Jesus I still higher. Said I higher. higher. Said I higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, yeah. higher, be lifted higher. Come on, be lifted, be lifted. Jesus, we want to lift your name. Jesus, we want to lift your name. Jesus, we want to lift your name. Hosanna. Hosanna. Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Anybody want the king to be lifted high? Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Get that man so cold about saying. Let our king be lifted up. Let our king be lifted up. Let our king be lifted up. Good morning. I just stand here to welcome all our first time visitors in person and online to Fountain Worship Center, located at 3800 East Broad Rock Road, where our pastor is none other than Pastor Kenneth Alexander Taylor. And our first lady is Lady Tamniqua Taylor. And our shepherd mother, Taylor. I just want to encourage um, all our visitors this morning to chime on in. We all family. Time in. We're not spectating this morning, but we're going to participate and give God glory. And I'm um, just going to go ahead and read our mission statement. If you know it, please read along with me. Our mission as a body of believers is to go into the communities, get the lost and broken, give impartation and encouragement, and grow in a safe place called home. A place of healing and deliverance. Go, get, give, and grow. All right, for the next few moments, um, as we prepare for our time of giving, I just want you to go across the aisle and greet your neighbor, somebody you didn't come with this morning. Make somebody feel welcome this morning.
each other today. <laughs> in this place he inhabits the praises of his people he's a great and mighty God he's a wonderful counselor he's a marvelous friend we bless his holy name enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and be thankful unto him I need to hear some thankful people this morning let me see some thankful people that is glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. If it had not been for the Lord, who is yet on my side, where would I be? Testify to your neighbor and say, I don't know where I would be. I have no idea where I would be if he had not saved me, redeemed me from the hands of the enemy. I'll be like a ship tossed to and fro. But I thank God for saving a wretch like me. I need you to lift your hands and make the devil mad and open up your mouth and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being so good to me. Thank you for being water when I was thirsty food when I was hungry, shelter when I ain't had no place to go. Thank you for being peace when I was losing my mind. Lord, I just want to tell you, I got to tell you, thank you. Tap your neighbor and say, do you got to thank you in your soul? Down in your belly, in your spirit, just spring up a thank you. I don't know where you're going to get it from, from your pinky toe. I got to thank you in my belly, it's in my back. I got to thank you. Down in the depths of my soul. He has been good to me. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Amen. I want to welcome you to Fountain Worship Center. If this is your first time worshiping with us, can you wave your hands so I can acknowledge you? Thank you. Oh, y'all stand. We got good visitors today. Come on, y'all stand so y'all can greet them. We not that church, we don't make you say your name and stuff all over me, you know. We not that church. But what we do over here, we participate in praise with you. And so, if y'all just happen to feel the spirit visitors, you right at home. Because guess what? We gonna dance and shout and scream and run with you. Amen. We gonna get it in with you no matter what. But we are grateful. I be trying to look cute, y'all. It don't be working long. <laughs> that was funny, brother. Will. Look, it don't work long, y'all. I'm choking up here. This is why y'all need to go to the gym and work out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You gotta work out because. When you go to the gym, you got that. Yeah, I know how when we was when we was fit, we could dance and shout for a long time. You know, I give y'all a quick 30 seconds and I'm done. Amen. But let me tell you this. Whenever the devil come in your life and you don't know what else to, to say, I'm going to tell you what you do. You got to put on the garment of praise. I asked your neighbor, say, neighbor, what did you wear to church today? I see what you got on right there. You sure look nice. I ain't never seen that before. But what you got on today? Did you put on the garment of praise today? Did you come in here heavy, weighed it, laid it down, or did you put on the praise? Ask your neighbor, say, if you're going to sit on this road, I need to make sure you're going to praise him on this road. I need to make sure you're going to be a participant 
If I shout, will you shout? If I jump, will you jump? If I scream, will you scream? If I go crazy, will you go crazy? Check your room and see if they gonna be a participant with you. I need to see who gonna praise them today. I don't think he is, no, I need to see who's a part of worship today. He's great and greatness to be praised. Hallelujah. It's always a part of service. I don't know how, but it's always a part of service. Praise is always a part of the experience. You can never exit out. Praise. Don't ever take me nowhere where they tell me I can't praise them. I don't want to be. I get up and walk out. Because listen, this is my testimony. God has been good to me. Can we have testimony service real quick? I need you to just look at somebody and tell them, baby, God's been good to me. He's been faithful to me. Listen, most of all, he's been consistent with me. We ain't got enough time, Elder Cook, to tell our stories. But I can just sum it all up. He's been better than me than I could be to myself. I'm going to give you 30 seconds because, y'all, we got to move. I want to see some real praises that know he's been good. To so just take 30 seconds and give him praise for being a good father. Praise him, AJ. Get your hand. 
y'all too iffy for me. I can't sit with that. I need to be so crazy. I don't need a reason. I am the reason. I don't need to think of nothing else. I am the thought. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Take these phones from these kids. Come on. If these children got phones, take these phones from these children. Come on. I want everybody participating. My children, nieces and nephews, come on, take the phones from them. I want them to just to participate in service. I ain't the parent, I'm just, I want them to be engaged a little bit. Come on. It ain't that important. I don't want my children playing games in church. Come on. Just seeing it. You know, I'm not going to rebuke y'all openly like this, all right? I'm going to tell you this. When I was younger, keep that track going, my parents made us sit on the first or the second row. And we didn't have phones when I was a kid, all right? I ain't going to be rude and like that stuff, right? I'll tell y'all the truth. We didn't have that stuff. What we did was we had a tambourine or a drumstick. And we had a triangle and we had little bongos. And you know what kept us out of trouble? We stayed in church and we used our hands and our feet to give God praise. When we was younger, they couldn't stop us from shouting. They couldn't stop us from dancing. They used to have to pull us and tell us to sit down. Because we did whatever we seen our parents do. If the parents jump in praise and jump in and give God glory, what you think your children going to do? If your child see that you worshiping and praising God undignified, what you think your children going to do? Train up a child in the way they should go. So when they get old, they won't depart from it. But if they don't see you engaged, they ain't got nothing to look forward to. I need every parent for the next 30 seconds to just give God praise for your child being a part of worship with you. Everybody praise them. Oh, 
Jesus. about the shoes. That's a praise. <laughs> he said, can't no shoes hold me back in praise. Y'all can't hear me? 
Somebody in here, you got a child that you've been praying for, that they will return back to their rightful place in God. I don't know who you are, but I see it in the spirit. You've been praying consistently for one child. If that is you, I want you to give God praise for the return of your seed. I don't know who it is. It may be somebody watching online, but you got a child that's not in their rightful place. They're not in church. And you've been praying that God will bring them back to church. You've been praying that God will save them, that no bullet and no jail will have them. If that's you, I want you to give them 30 seconds of praise right now for your seed. I don't know, it might be somebody online. But I promise you, you won't have to visit them behind bars. Neither will you have to see them in a casket. Worship Center. So glad you came. We're one big happy family gathered in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let's try to transition so we can take up our general church offering. So we can take up our offering. Let's prepare. If this is your Sunday to tithe, we have tithe envelopes that are coming around. We ask all tithers if this is your Sunday to tithe. If this is your Sunday to tithe, we're asking that you stand on this side of the church. All tithers, I give you a second to write. David that said before I stop praising them I'll add more to it I'll become more undignified than this when you look back over your life and you think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed I got a testimony when I look back over all the years 
All the times it should have been over. All the times I was scrambling for food. The times when I didn't have a roof over my head, a car in the driveway. When I had to uh, call Peter, John, James, and everybody else to pay my bills. Now God made a way for me. I can help others. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a, all the times you was in the hospital bed and the doctors gave you a report that they didn't understand. But somehow, somewhere you came out that hospital. You shocked the doctors. I can truly say that I've been blessed. You sat behind bars for days. They gave you a sentence and you didn't even live that long in that jail cell. But you live longer outside of jail. I can truly say that I've been blessed. How many times did you pop those pills and you didn't die in that room? You stuck needles up your arm and you didn't die in that bathroom. You had that loaded gun upside your head You told your children goodbye But look what the Lord has done I can truly say That I've been blessed I got a testimony all tithers come on this show Sunday the tithe I want all tithers to come get in place come on tithers oh my god my god Just waiting for the tithers, come on. This is your Sunday, you're still writing. I don't mind you crying and writing. Amen. Father, we thank you for those that are tithing this morning. I pray that you will multiply blessings upon them, that there be no lack. But Father, we pray that you release the abundance of rain for your people. Father, as we sow out 10%, we ask that you will multiply the 90 Father, blow our minds in this next season, in these next days to come. Give us blessings, Father, that we might have to ask people, can I bless you? Father, bless us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, Tyler, come with a cheerful heart. For all those that are giving their general church offering, I want you to stand. This is your general church offering. Everyone should be giving their general church offering. Tithes and offering go hand in hand. It's together. If this is your general church offering, you can come now. If you're giving by way of Cash App or Giblify, I pray blessings upon you. Come on. If this is your general church offering, Pray riches and wealth into your life, into your family, into your finances.
still giving. Want to give you your announcements briefly, and then we'll transition into the word. I love to see so many smiles. Y'all happy today. I love that. I love that. Amen. I like that. I like to see those smiles. Amen. Even though people say it make the devil mad, but it make God glad. Amen. When you can smile. Amen. And so we're grateful. We have a very busy week coming up this week. And so this evening at 5 o'clock, if you want to hear some good worship music, you want to come minister yourself, we have Elder, I call the boy Elder, Brother Trayvon Lynn. Amen. He will be one day. Amen. Amen. He is a true man of God, and we're grateful for what God is doing in his life. Amen. Amen. And so if you uh, want to come, maybe you have a poem, maybe you like to uh, say quotes or sing or minister and dance tonight at 5 o'clock, they will have worship vibes at our North Campus, which is 413 West Gray Street. And so you can come minister your gift at 5 o'clock, and it'll be a wonderful blessing to gather and connect with different people. Amen? If you need the address, we'll give it to you again. Amen. Bishop Good is here. We'll, we want you to be able to come and be a part. She can take my seat. Be a part of what God is doing in your life. Amen? I know oftentimes we don't get this Sunday morning to do all of what we want to do, but I want you to know that you can come at 5, or if you just want to be a part and support and worship with us. Come on and worship vibe. Don't let the word vibe tear you apart. Amen. But you holy sanctified. Fuck that. Amen. Let me call it a Holy Ghost service. Okay. All right. If you're coming for deliverance, I'll see you at five at Fountain North. Amen. All right. And so we want to make sure that everybody's a part. We host these events and have these services, not just for us because we're bored. No, we have them for everybody, for you, you, la di da and everybody. Amen. And so we sacrifice our time and our energy and prepare so that you could be a part of worship and be a part of something with us. All right. And then this week on Wednesday, if the graphics is they got them on Wednesday, I'll be in Newport News on this Wednesday ministering. So if you want to travel with us, you can. If not, we have more engagement. But the praise team is going with me on Wednesday. I'll be in Newport News with Pastor Keith Smith. We will be with him at 7 o'clock. This is his March Madness, but a lot of people are in Holy Week, which is Holy Week gearing up towards the road to, not the road to Pentecost, but on the road to Easter, resurrection, all right? We say resurrection, all right? I know y'all, I don't argue with y'all, amen? We say resurrection over here, amen, all right? So that's where I'll be at. He's preached here before, and so we will be going to spend ministry moments with him, and then on Thursday, we will be with Bishop Marvin Jefferson. Amen. We will be with Bishop Marvin Jefferson on Thursday. Amen. So we have preached there. We've been there at least four times. So they love us, and he keeps bringing us back. Amen. We thank you, Bishop, for that invitation again. And so we will be there. That is 2311 Ford Avenue. All right? 2311 Ford Avenue. If you wish to go, we will be in all black because they are taking communion. And so I will just do all black if you can. All right, all black. The choir has been asked to sing and to be, be prepared to minister. We will be there on Thursday. All right? And then on Sunday evening, somebody shout Sunday. Let's say Sunday. Amen. Amen. We'll be here for our resurrection service. And I'm going to do this. I want you to put on your best church clothes. Bring out those hats, other grades. I don't know where they're yet, but go get them. Amen. Go get them. Go get you a hat. Go get you something. Go get you a nice hair piece or a nice little tutu or something. Some nice heels. Amen. Amen. If it got to be them two by two heels, worm. If it got to be, you know, just worm. I ain't going to judge you. Amen. But I want you to come. Somebody say, look nice. Amen. And if you don't got nothing new, just match up something old and then something else old and then it's new. Amen. Amen. Change the perfume or the cologne. It's new. It's new to me. Amen. Amen. I had to ask Anderson. I said, did I wear this suit the other day? Because I couldn't remember. Amen. And so you got to take a picture in it so you won't wear it twice in one week. <laughs> oh, glory. All right. And so I want you to put on your vest next Sunday. Let's come and have a good time and invite somebody at 11 o'clock. We'll be here for Sunday school, and then we'll come back at 11. And then on Sunday evening, I'm asking everyone that can, everyone, I'm putting this notion on everyone to go with me to Bishop McCoy Eaton's church. We will be over there. That's, I don't know how the address, but we will be there. Okay, Seminary Avenue. 
2500 Seminary Avenue. That's where we will be at Sunday evening at 5 p.m., all right? And so we want to pack his church out. Y'all got to get that good time so we can have seats, all right? Y'all know Apostle McCoy Eaton. All right, we have a wonderful man of God that's going to bring us the word this morning. Amen. Y'all saying, who is that? It's Lawrence. My husband is the Lawrence Taylor. He is such a gift to this ministry. They had a wonderful event on yesterday, the Future Leaders Brunch. And they had great speakers, and the young people enjoyed it. They had bacon and eggs and waffles and cinnamon toast crunch and apple juice and orange juice. and Was that Scrabble? What was that? Corned beef hash. All right, they had good stuff down there. They had, amen, they had good little stuff, and it was good to me. But we are in for a treat this morning. We have one that has been a blessing to this ministry. He has a gift inside of him. The way the Lord speaks to him is, is amazing how God ushers him in the spirit. I love people that can bring the word to life, that can make you understand the word. Whenever you read the Bible, whenever you uh, study the scripture, you shall always be found in the scripture. From Genesis to Revelation, you shall always be found in the scripture. The scripture shall either bring conviction, it shall bring healing, or it shall bring deliverance to you. If you're just reading the Bible just to read it, then you're not doing its service to your life. If reading the word does not change you, then you're not studying the word. Because to study the word should bring about a change in your life. Something should fall off. It's almost like going to the gym and you're really not invested into exercising. And you still leave there and there is nothing inside of you or on you that is in pain. The word should bring pain to you a little bit. It should make you want to do something different in your life. All right? And so we have one that can give us the word of God. Over here, we give you enough to understand, and we give you more so you can go home and read it for yourself. Amen. I want you to be able to bring your Bibles to church. So as we get ready to listen to this word, would you just set this atmosphere for worship as we receive from this man and God? I want you to begin to position yourself to receive a word. I want you to position yourself to receive blessings in this sanctuary. However the word come forth, Father, we are open to receiving from you. However you get ready to move in this room, Father, we are ready and expectation of a miracle. Speak to our hearts and change our minds, Holy Spirit. Your sons and your daughters are listening. We are tuned in to receive a word from you. Now can you begin to lift your voice in this sanctuary and give God praise as this wonderful man of God come and give us a word from the Lord. Can we lift our hands for a moment? Jesus. Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim that Jesus, your name is Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Can you help me praise team? You're the only living God. It's all right. You're the only living God. All over this house, let's sing it. You're the only living God. You're the only living God. Oh, sing. You're the only living God. You're the only living God. Oh, you're the only living God. You're the only living God. Oh, and we love you. We love you. We love you. Come on, let me love with your hands. We love you. We love you. Oh, we love you. We love you. We adore you. We adore you. Adore you. We adore you, Father. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, we adore Father. You. We need you. We need you every hour. We need you every second. We need you every moment. We need you. Oh, you're the only living God. You're the only living God. You are Savior. You. Our Lord and you are God. Hallelujah. 
Come on, raise your worship. I know we don't have a piano, but the piano can't worship him. The drums can't worship him. The mics can't worship him. Our clothes can't worship him. You have to worship him. Oh, he inhabits the praises of his people. Fill this room so we can feel his presence manifest in the room. Father, we love you. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Father, we adore you. Amazing, God. You're a good father to us, God, and we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, the presence of the Lord is already here. I feel him in the room already, and I'm excited to see what he will do in these next fleeting moments. Amen. It's so good to see all of your faces. Go ahead and smile at somebody like my mama would say. Just look at somebody and smile. They want to see your, your pearly whites. It's okay if they look yellow and you're missing a little. It's all right. You still got a beautiful smile. Amen. <laughs> I give honor and reverence to my pastor. Don't he look good this morning? I need that suit. Might need to take it down a, take it down a couple sizes for me, but I like that suit, pastor. I give honor to my mother. She's going to... Um, <laughs> She's going to get me after church. We were supposed to sing a song for her, but maybe she, maybe she can sing it. <laughs> so all of our ministry gifts to everybody in their, in their rightful places, so all our ministry gifts to our praise team, to the band, to our elders, ministers, I honor you. I praise you. I thank you. I love you all so much. Um, as I'm preparing, if you will go to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 21. Where I would take my text this morning, Matthew 21, and we're going to read just a little bit of reading this morning, but that's all right, because we love the word here. I'll be reading from the NLT version, and we're going to be reading from verse 1 to 11. If you got to say amen, if you need a little bit more time, say, wait for me. Pastor, I like your mic. That's okay. <laughs> like a little bass in it. <laughs> all right. If we can all stand in reverence and honor of the word of God. Y'all pray I don't trip over these pants today, all right? <laughs> but God is good. Matthew 21. Starting at verse 1. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two ahead of him. And if your Bible says it in red, this is Jesus talking. Sent two of them ahead, on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone should ask, just say, the Lord needs them. Say, the Lord needs you. And he will immediately let you take them. This took place. So, so prophecy will be fulfilled. This took place to fulfill the, pro the prophecy that said, verse 5, tell the people of Jerusalem, look at your king. Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Verse 6, the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt. And he sat on it. Verse 8. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the pro process and procession, excuse me, and the people all around him were shouting. Now, this version is different, but I like the King James version, of course. Hosanna for the son of David to the son of David. Blessed. On the one who comes on, it comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. I know it says praise God at the NLT. Verse 10, the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. 
Who is this? Who is this, they asked. And the crowd replied, it is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. As you're on your way down to your seat, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's all the commotion about? Come on, turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, what's all this commotion about? Kind Father, I thank you now. God, I thank you for this day that you've blessed us to see. God, we thank you for new mercy. We thank you for new grace that you've blessed us to see. Father, you have been faithful to me. Father, you've been faithful to us. And we take this moment, this opportunity to tell you thank you. Father, if there's any sins before us, God, we ask you to forgive us even now. God, you said you would throw those things into the sea of forgiveness. You would spread them as far as the east is from the west. And God, we thank you for your love. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we thank you for your forgiving power. God, we thank you for your redeeming power. We don't want anything in between our soul and our Savior. We don't want anything to hinder our prayer or our request in the airways. Father, Father God, forgive us even now. Now, God, this moment is yours. This hour is yours. This time is yours. Anoint these lips of clay, God. Lawrence decreases while you increase in the room, God. It's all for your glory. It's all for your honor, God. Let someone be encouraged, healed, set free, even saved on today. God, save someone on today because your son Jesus came just to do that for us. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen. What's all the commotion about? We're going to find out today. Uh, for my short introduction, just bear with me for a moment. We got to lay just a little bit of groundwork. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Set the stage, if you will. Is that all right? We, as descendants of God's chosen people, the seeds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Israel, and of African and native descent, we have one of the most influential cultures in the world. Uh, our imprint is evident in a multitude of ways, in politics, in economics, in music, in hairstyles and fashion. Come on, look at y'all hair. Y'all got nice hair today, amen. In hairstyles and fashion, in religion and faith, in cuisine and even language. Oh, my God, we can come up with some stuff, can't we? <laughs> like back in the 80s and the 90s, I'm pretty sure if I pass the mic, we will all have something different to say. But back in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, a simple hello went from what's happening to what's up to what up to yo to, to this is my favorite, y'all. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Look, what y'all say now? What, what's up, tween? Like, I don't know what y'all mean. That's what y'all say now, Nick? What's, what's up, twin? I guess. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Grace and peace be unto you, right? Um, uh, even down to, uh, to culture universal behaviors and similarities, our imprint is just abroad. For example, um, I was looking for him today, but I don't see him, but I'm going to use you, cousin. Um, if Charmaine, if cousin Charmaine just randomly just start running for the door, bolting for the door. What y'all going to do? Y'all going to start running too. Exactly. <laughs> run the opposite way. Oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. You're going to run. Uh, for another example um, in our culture, if we see a crowd of people headed somewhere out of curiosity, it's only in our nature that we want to go. I know some people that like, they see lights and they see cops flying. They just want to, oh, let me go see what's, I'll go the other way. I don't want to see what's going on. I'll watch, i see on the news and pray for them as I'm going home, all right? But it's in our nature, it's in our culture that we want to go run and see what's going on. What's all this commotion about? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the commotion about? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, in, this, in the previous chapter, just to lay a little groundwork, Jesus, in the previous chapter, I know I can't tackle all of it, but uh, right around the middle of chapter 20, Jesus predicts his death for a third time. 
he spoke to his disciples as they were heading towards Jerusalem for the Passover. We're going to get back to this Passover, but for now, they are heading to Jerusalem for the Passover. And he told his disciple how he would be mocked, scourged, and crucified, and then rise again. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. Look, may not come where you want them, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus explained to his disciples how he would be mocked and crucified and then rise again. And even on this occasion, the disciples didn't understand Jesus. They didn't understand what he was say saying because the meaning was hidden from them. They soon, they would soon learn, though, what Jesus meant in the events to follow. I'll leave that to pastor on next Sunday. Uh to the events that will follow. He taught his disciples um, about serving others, about serving and serving others. Uh, and that's where we get this scripture. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, huh? To serve others and to what? Give his life as a ransom for many. Thank God for Jesus. He's leaving the town of Jericho and, and here is that culture, I mean, here's that crowd following him, and he heals two blind men sitting by the road. Can I pause here just for a second to stress the importance of not letting Jesus pass you by? The word says that they began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And uh, 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 they couldn't, they, they could have kept quiet. They could have said nothing. They could have let Jesus just pass by. And even after the culture, I mean, even after the crowd uh, uh, told them to be quiet, as the word said, the word says they shouted even louder, Lord, thy son of David, have mercy on us. I'm going to borrow this from Overseer Henderson. Tap your neighbor one time and say, don't miss your opportunity with Jesus. Turn to your other neighbor and say, don't miss your appointment. Because when he comes, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. Jesus touched their eyes and instantly they could see. And they followed him. Uh, Luke 19 accounts, and I'm putting it like this because when you study it, they don't always tell you the proper timeline or how events happen moment by moment. It's a little, you know, some of the days get a little blurry. That's all right, though. Uh, uh, but Luke 19 accounts uh, that he goes to eat at Zacchaeus, a chief, Zacchaeus' house, a chief tax collector, and he was a very wealthy man. And this is also another example of not missing your encounter or your opportunity or your appointment with Jesus, even despite what others think of you. Because Jesus didn't choose to sit at Miss Saved, Sanctified, Filled with the Holy Ghost, Ain't Nobody Going to Heaven But Me's table. He came to sit at what these people deemed him to be a sinner. They didn't like the tax collectors back then. They considered those evil people. They were, listen... Thank you, Uncle Mac. I need Uncle Mac up here with me. <laughs> My God. In our culture, we can be quick to judge. Real quick. Real quick to judge. Real quick to switch sides. Oh, my Lord, real quick to switch sides. We'll be real quick to believe every part of a story, even as it's unraveling. And I'm sure you wondering why in my introduction I brought up all of these uh, cultural similarities and behaviors. I just need us all on the same page to figure out what all of this commotion is about. While all of you came to church this morning that we're going to talk about in Matthew 21. So here we are in our text. Jesus is nearing Jerusalem, the city of the temple. And John records that he stops through Bethany and Bethage on the Mount of Olives, and he stays at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who Jesus had just raised from the dead. Here's that culture again. I mean, here's that crowd again coming to see Jesus, coming to see Jesus, but also they wanted to see Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. Thank you, Henderson. The devil can't kill what God wants alive, and his promise has to be, it must be, it has to be fulfilled. 
In the second through the fourth verse, he told two of his disciples to go into the next village, untie the donkey there, and beside it, bring its coat, untie it, and bring it to him. If anyone should act, say, the Lord has need of them. Say it one more time. The Lord has need of me. Here it is again in our culture. We push, especially today, we push, do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. Say what you want to say. Do whatever, well, do whatever you feel. Do whatever serves you. Oh, they love that one. Do whatever serves you. <laughs> do whatever floats your boat. Thank you. you helping me preach this morning. Uh, but can I tell you that Jesus in this next season requires your obedience. He requires your obedience. Those two disciples, and this is just my imagination, as Jesus was telling them to go get this donkey, they could have been thinking, uh, should we really just go and take it? Should we really just go and untie it? Is this some sort of test? Come on, this is Jesus we're talking about. This is Jesus the Messiah. Shouldn't we be going to get a horse and a chariot or something like that? Here it is. What if we, what if we got to throw hands? What if, brother try to, what if the owner tried to, you know, and we got to... They could have been thinking anything, but in this season, God requires your obedience. Your obedience may not, thank you, your obedience may not require a donkey. Only you and God knows what that obedience or what that thing will require. You, you and God will only know what it will require or involve. Is he calling you to repentance? Is he calling you to forgive someone? Is he calling you to help someone? Is he calling you to serve? Is he calling you to say no to something or to say yes to something? Brothers and sisters, um, uh, obey the voice of the Lord. Why? Why? Why are you asking? Why are you saying this, um, young black man? Because in their simple obedience, it brought God's glory. Can I tell you that your obedience will bring forth God's glory? Hallelujah to God. So be obedient in this season. Whatever he's asking you to do, just, just do it. Just do it. I promise you, it'll make sense after a while. Uh, your yes, your yes, Lord, um, and your willingness to obey will bring God's glory. I don't know um, about you, but I want to bring his name glory. I want to bring his name glory. So the disciples, they did just as Jesus commanded. And this was so prophecy would be fulfilled. Um, Uncle Mac was just teaching this this morning back in Zechariah uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 9. It says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous. Uh-huh. Do you know the word? Righteous. Uh, I lost my part. That's all right. Righteous and having salvation. Gentle and riding a donkey on a coat, the fowl of a donkey. Can I pause, pause right here just to give you my first point? Jesus is coming, bringing you peace. I don't know, I don't know this morning who needs the peace, but Jesus is bringing you peace this morning. The donkey symbolizes service, humility, and peace. And uh, uh, the people, uh, they thought Jesus was coming in, kicking down the doors, slaying all of their enemies. And that's just like us. I know. I know because I'm like that too. I think, Lord, help me. Help me here. Help me there. Help me with this situation. Help me with this situation. Lord, get rid of my enemies. Get rid of my, uh, my haters. All this other. He's not coming to do none of that. He's going to come bringing peace. Peace in your mind, peace in your heart, peace around your situation. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for your peace. And it's just like our culture. They'll tell you fight first. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. 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 Save yourself, all right? <laughs> Save yourself. Just like the crowd, just like the culture. They wanted Jesus to come in and handle all of their problems, kill and defeat all of their enemies and their haters. Uh, uh, but Jesus is bringing peace. I'm talking about that peace that surpasses all of it, all of it, the things you don't even understand, the things you can't even recollect, all understandings. They brought him the donkey. 
as I continue in my text, they brought the donkey and the coat, and they threw their garments over it, and Jesus sat on it. Most of the crowd, as the word says, they spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and they cut palm branches and spread them out on the road. As Jesus is processing in, um, all the people were around him shouting, Hosanna! 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 I can't even <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That's the inside of the world. <laughs> forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. All right. They were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The whole city was turned up, y'all. They was turned. They was turned up. This was done demonstrating their understanding that Jesus was the same Lord who had delivered Israel anciently. They recognized Christ as the same Lord. They recognized Christ as their long-awaited Messiah. Hosanna in the Hebrew means, please save us. It's important to note that uh, this crowd was also here for the festival of the, of, of the Passover that I said we was going to come back to. I wish I had time to really dig into this and uh, uh, we had a different setting to where we can break this down and maybe Uncle Mac can, can help us with this. But uh, this is the day when Jesus is entering Jerusalem. This is the day that they would have chose a lamb to be sacrificed or chose a lamb to come into the house with them to save it for the Passover meal. Uh, I don't know if y'all grew up in the same church as me. I know some of y'all for all I guess, but uh, they used to say, had the mothers in my church used to have a saying, and it said, he may not come when you want him, but he's what? Oh, we had the same mothers in our church, amen. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. The day that they would have had to find a lamb without blemish, spot, or wrinkle. Here comes one coming through the city without spot or wrinkle. Come on here. I wish I had help right there. It's remember, this festival is to remember their freedom from bondage in, e in Egypt and the sparing of their firstborn sons of the Israelites, um, firstborn sons of the Israelites, when he had smote the land of Egypt. Like I said, they would have uh, had to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood over the doorposts. My God. But thank God for the lamb. Somebody say, thank God for the lamb. The perfect lamb shows up. They used to also sing a song uh, back in the day. We don't have to slay the lamb anymore. We don't have to put. Because what someone has taken, his name is the great, the great, the great, the great Jesus, the great, the great I am. This also, <laughs> Henderson might sing that before we're done here. This is also, kicks, this also kicks off Holy Week. Kicks off Holy Week, uh, which is the last days of Jesus' mortal life and on his way to fulfilling promise. As we uh, approach this week, and meditate and reflect and remember this time, remember Jesus requires your obedience. He's not coming to wage war. He's not coming to a, 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 a war against your situation or your problems, but he's coming to bring you peace. He's coming to save, set free, deliver. Uh, uh, and here it is, here it is. Jesus will always meet your expectations, but he's going to do more than that. He's going to exceed your expectations. Some of us be praying for a car, praying for a house, praying for this, praying for that. And Lord say, no, 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 no. I'm trying to fix your whole situation. You praying for a car, but I'm trying to fix your credit. You praying for a house, but I'm trying to make sure you never outside again. Come on here. He will always exceed your expectations. We pray and we ask, uh, 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 the Lord to save us, but he will come and do more than that. They screamed Hosanna, but Jesus was coming to do more than just save you, more than just, more than just redeem you. He's coming to establish his kingdom 
forever. And here's the part, here's a shout for real. And I, I hope you're excited about Jesus as much as I am because he wants you to have a seat in the kingdom as well. Come on, he's coming to establish his kingdom, but he wants you to have a seat in that kingdom. Don't be like the crowds. Don't be like the culture today. Please, 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 don't be wishy-washy like the culture today. Don't be wishy-washy like the crowd when one minute they're crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, and then the next they're crying, crucify him. Come on, don't be wishy-washy. Don't be wishy-washy like the culture, to, I mean this crowd. Don't be wishy-washy, y'all. God is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? I'm trying to figure out this morning, whose side are y'all leaning on? Uncle Mac, you, was, you, you got me. Whose side are you leaning on? Oh, whose side are you leaning on? Oh, whose side are you fasting on? Whose side are you leaning on? I said, whose side are you praying on? Praying on Lord, Lord, Come on. Whose side are you praying on? Praying on Lord, One more time. Whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on Lord, Lord, whose side are you leaning on? Lord, Lord, I'm on his side this morning. I won't switch up. I won't switch. I don't care what the culture do today. I ain't switching up on him. I ain't switching up on him. He's been too faithful to me. I don't know about you, but if I wish I can, I wish I had a witness. He's been too faithful to me. I don't know about you. What they say, ain't no switching up. Something to, I don't know that. I don't know that song. I don't know that song. <laughs> I'm, old, I'm older than I look, y'all. How did I go? Look, they're that culture, y'all. <laughs> we in for life, yeah. Yeah, we in this thing for life, Jesus. We in this thing for life because he came just for us. As I cut across, as I cut across this, cut, cut, cut across this field, because we don't have too much time this morning, uh, we got to figure out what all this commotion is about. Uh, 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 nearing to my last point, uh, Jesus is coming to clear some stuff up. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's coming to clear some stuff up. He's coming to clear some stuff up, y'all. He's clearing it up this morning. Listen, uh, uh, in, Matthew, uh, in Matthew 21, uh, 16, 12 through 16, let's read it. Let's read it. Can we read it? Jesus entered the temple and began, this is the NLT, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people who were buying and selling animals and, and for the sacrifice. He knocked over, I wish I had a picture to show this, he knocked over the tables of money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he said to them, the scripture declares my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Listen, let me help us this morning, because this is what the Lord gave me, because pastor, pastor said it perfectly. Every time I study for a sermon, I try to find myself in the Word. And let me tell you what Lawrence did. Lawrence started filling his life up with a whole bunch of stuff, filling, up, filling my life up with a whole bunch of devices and, and, and proclivities. Come on here. Can I have a witness there? I can't talk about it all because I know we on Sunday morning, we on the airway. So you catch me outside or back in the office, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth about myself, all right? But here it is. We fill our lives up with quotes and inspirations, and, 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 and we got to follow this one. We got to follow that one. Pastor, I love it. I don't mean no disrespect to nobody here or nobody outside. The lights are nice. The aesthetic is nice. We beautified our temples, haven't we? Isn't this nice in here? It looks beautiful in here, doesn't it? Oh, but Jesus is coming to clear out. The temples. He say anything that's not like God, he's come. I ain't gonna flip it over. He's flipping the tables, y'all. Look, not only in this house, but he's clearing up stuff in. Oh, I wish I had somebody excited about Jesus. He's coming to clean stuff up in. God Almighty. Ho! 
Won't you let me? Won't you let me? Won't you let me in? Sing for that. Heist up your window, huh? Open up the door. Come on, let them come on in. Come on, one more time. It feel like a sanctified church. Won't you let them in? Won't you let Open up the door, let him come on in. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's clearing some stuff up. He's clearing some stuff up. He's clearing it up. Oh, he's clearing it up. He's clearing it up. He's clearing it up. What's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? Come on, the crowd is here. I see you. You look beautiful. The crowd is here. What's all this commotion about? I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, even Jesus proclaimed his messiahship and his authority. And, oh, they didn't like this. The disciples didn't like this. Not the, not the disciples, the high priest and, uh, at this time. They didn't like that. They didn't like that Jesus was claiming to be the son of God. Come on, the Messiah, this long-awaited Messiah that they was working on. Hold on, but let me backtrack. God is clearing up the temple because right after he says this, they said the blind and the lame, they came in the temple and Jesus healed them. If we want to see real healing, real deliverance, real change taking place, we got to clear out these temples, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry I got stuck there. We got to clear out these temples. Come on, both inside and out. We got to clear out these temples. Oh, my, my. I wish I had a hoop. <laughs> What's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? Come on, you can stay there because we almost done. Born of a virgin. Come on here. Under humble circumstances. As prophesied, he performed miracles. He's lived his life. He learned what it feels like to be a human. Come on. He learned. He growed. He performed many, many miracles. He healed the lame. He opened blinded eyes. He healed the sick. Come on. He raised people from the dead. He was baptized. He was uh, transfigured on the mount. Even his father confirmed who he was. He taught. He loved. He forgave. Come on. He lived this mortal life just to die for the sins of the world. Come on. The song said, living, he loved me. Come Come on, dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my far away. Rising, freed me forever. One day, come on, I wish I had help. One day, what's all this commotion about? What's all this commotion about? I'm here to tell you, don't get cocky when I say this. I'm here to tell you that all the commotion, it's about you. It's about you. He came here just for you. All the commotion is about you. Oh, we thank God for Jesus. Oh, we thank God for Jesus. When I, can I tell you all this commotion? He came all the way down here just... I don't think y'all like to hear that. Thank you, Uncle Donnie. The song said, just for me. It's the musician in me. Just for me. Jesus came and he did it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No, I got to thank you for real. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had a witness. I don't think y'all excited that he came all the way down here just for you. I know you bougie. I know you don't think you deserve it. I know you don't think you deserve it. I know you don't think you worth it. Out of all the things that you've done, out of all the things that you said, come on. And he still wants you. All this promotion. All this commotion was about little old me? 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 So. Huh. All about me? I came to encourage somebody. Today's about you. Come on. Oh, I feel him in the room. He's in the room even now. I wish somebody, I, I wish somebody who really had Jesus on the inside would get excited about him being in the room this morning. 
because they came to save somebody. Somebody don't know him like you know him. Somebody don't know him like you know him. Somebody don't have the relationship that you have. Come on, I need you to get excited that he came just to save My God, don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity with Jesus. Don't miss your appointment. Two, you gotta be obedient. You gotta be obedient. He's coming, bringing you peace. He's coming, bringing you peace. Thank God he's clearing some stuff up. He's clearing some stuff up. Can we stand to our feet? He's clearing some stuff up for us. Listen, I said in this sermon, God is coming this time to establish his kingdom forever. Forever. Uncle Max said it this morning. He can't, he, he, look, the flood happened first, but this time, what did he say? He's coming by fire next time. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but under the, the, the whatever authority he gave me this morning, I encourage you to get ready if you're not ready. Get to know this Jesus who came just. I'm sorry, you got my spirit right there in the black. Oh, he came just for you. He came just for you. He came just for you. Oh! Come on. Can we raise up Jesus' name in the room for a moment? Come on, Jesus. Jesus. If you don't know what to say, just call on him. Jesus. Come on, thou son of David. Have mercy. Have mercy on our souls this morning. Father, forgive us because we took advantage of you. We took advantage of your blood. Come on. Come on, God. We took advantage of all the ways you made for us. Come on. Lift up his name. Jesus. 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 Come on in the room. Jesus. Jesus. Come on in the room, God. Jesus. know if you don't know if you don't know what this commotion is about or you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior please I bid you to come down to this altar if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior listen you may even know him but you want to recommit yourself you want to give him a new yes not an old yes come on we've been doing the best that we can We've been doing, the, some of us have been doing the best that we can. Come on, we've been running as long as we can, but we need a refreshing, a refreshing. We need to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus again. If you don't know him, please come to this altar. Just for me. Just for me. Oh, Jesus came and did it just I know I didn't deserve it. Just for me. Just for me. Oh, yeah. Jesus came and did it just for me. Come on, come to this altar, please, if you need him. Just for me. All this commotion was about you. Just for me. If you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord, come down. Jesus came and did it just for me. Oh, just for me. Come on, I want to introduce you. I want to introduce to to a friend who will never leave you. Can break it down and our culture today let me tell y'all something uh because i've been through this myself and i'm sure you can attest to uh friends are fickle today they're here today they're going tomorrow 
they switch up on you. They switch their circles like they switch their clothes. But I want to introduce to a friend who will never leave you. What kind of man is this? What kind of man is this that will lay down his life for a friend? I want to introduce you to the best friend that you will ever have in this life. Come on, you still have time. If you want to come down to this altar just to tell the Lord yes, just to meet this Jesus, this is a call to salvation. I promise you it's the best decision you can ever make. It's the best decision that you can make. It's all right. I know somebody might be sitting there nervous because they don't see anybody down here yet, but it's all right. All this commotion, it was about you. It was all about you. If you want to come down, there's also please, please come down. Please. Come on, I bid you to come. Come on, let's sing it again. Just for me. Hands lifted. Come on. Just for me. Come on, we can at least praise his name. Come on, Jesus. Jesus came and did just for me. Thank you, Lord, just, just for me. Reckless love of God and all it chases. 
Because I have to realize, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for us, right? So everything now, because he is a spirit, everything everything we do, everywhere we operate, we're now operating in the spirit. So consider the things of your life is spiritual, all right? They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so everything that's going on in your life now is spiritual. If you feel like your life is chaotic, you feel like that there's stuff going on in your life that you can't seem to manage and things and obstacles are keep on rising and stuff is just forming out of nowhere, I want you to know he's making noise to save you. Yes. When you look at it, he's making a disruption because he's trying to gather you together so he can save you. Yes. I want you to do something. If you're dealing with something in your life, I want you to begin to fill this house with worship and praise so that the devil can know that there is a sound coming out of you. What's all that commotion? There is something breaking out of you. What is going on in your life? God is shaking stuff. He's molding stuff. He's shifting stuff because he's trying to free you for whom the sun set free. It's truly free indeed. I didn't see my life going this way, but God saw it. I didn't see my family being like this, but Jehovah saw it. Jehovah said, I come to give you life. It ain't what you want, but the Spirit of the Lord said, it's what I want for you. He's shaking stuff. He's shifting stuff. He's changing stuff just for you. Jesus came and he did it just for you. Come on and lift your praise in this room. I got a worship inside of me. I got a hallelujah inside of me. I got to thank you, Jesus, because you did it for me. You saved me. You healed me. You brought me out. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. 
I didn't understand what all this noise was about. Uh, but now it's starting to make sense. Uh, the closer I get to Jesus, uh, it's starting to make sense. Uh, the closer I get to him, uh, he's starting to make sense of the trials. Uh, he's starting to make sense of the tribulation. Uh, he's starting to make sense of the sickness. Uh, he's starting to make sense of the warfare. He's starting to make sense of the death. Uh, the closer I get, uh, the closer I get, uh, the closer I get. Uh, the the I get, the more I understand him, the more I pray, the more I understand him, the more I read my word, the more I understand him, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver, the Lord will deliver, I need you to pull your name and say he's going to deliver you, he's going to set you free, he's going to bring your peace of mind because that's what he do that's what all this noise is about that's what all this commotion is about he did it for you he shook your family up to save you he shook your finances up to save you he shook your life up to save you because he loves you he loves you he loves you I need you to get out your seat and go tell somebody he did it for you he thought of you. It won't today he thought of you. But it was every day. Brand new mercies. He thought of you. He shook it up for you. He shifted you. He shaped you. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto myself for you. I need to see some praises in here that say you ain't have to do it, but I thank you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you. For me, you did it. For me, he died. Ain't gotta keep rehearsing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. your hand on your chest and say you did it for me you did it for me you did it for me you healed me you delivered me you set me free you brought me out you changed my mind you restored unto me the joy of my salvation you gave unto me new mind you gave unto me restoration you gave unto me peace you gave me clarity you gave me understanding you gave me wisdom hey glory I'm a little selfish because Lord knows you ain't have to do that for me. You didn't even have to. When I was formed in my mother's womb, you thought of me. I am a little selfish. You thought of me when nobody else did. I am a little selfish. For me. You know, we got to move. I think you should get a little selfish, Mother Margie. You want to know why? to think about how important you are to Jesus. Y'all don't want to be honest. There's only a few of us. We come from an honest church, right? When I really think about all the stuff that I did in my life, and let me be honest to you, the stuff that I'm still doing in my life, when people turn their back on you for making a better decision for your life because I say this mature people don't want to keep living the same I don't hang around nobody that want to stay the same you keep on doing the same old stuff that you was doing maturity don't mean you got a car and, and you can drive no 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 my son can drive he ain't mature maturity is when you can turn away from those things that's destroying you and press towards the mark, the prize of the high calling and say, there's something greater up ahead for me. 
I need you to just tap your name and say, neighbor, he thought enough to free me from everything that I couldn't walk out on my own. He thought enough to rescue me. I need you to tell somebody he's rescued my life. Ain't got no reason to go back. Ain't got no reason to turn back to that thing. You have rescued my life. I ain't never going back. I ain't never going back. Hey, if I do go back, I'm coming to get you out of it. But I'm telling you, I ain't staying in brokenness with you. I ain't staying in poverty with you. I'm not staying stuck up. I'm not staying in that time. I'm coming out. Yeah. I need to see some praises that say thank you for breaking me out of it. It was too dark. It was too hard. But Jesus did it. I couldn't ain't had a strip nigga to bring myself out of. But somehow, some way, I was able to get out of that brokenness. Somehow, some way, I was able to come out of that depression. I need to see some praises that say I'm glad. I came out of it. I came out of it. It was destroying me, but he brought me out. It was taking over me, but he brought me out. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to praise him for your outcome. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to praise him for your outcome. And then we got to get out of here. But I need to see some praises that say, I'm glad he brought me here out of that. Praise him.
That young man right there. That young man in the black with the glasses. Right here. Right there, yeah. Can you come in for a second? I want you to know. I don't know you. But I'm telling you. God has given you a clean slate today. While you was back there worshiping, I want to tell you what the Holy Ghost said to me. He said, I'm getting ready to wipe everything in your life clean. He said, I'm getting ready to give you a fresh start. Because I love you so much, said the Lord. I'm going to make perfect of your life. What does that mean? Because we're not perfect people. He's basically saying the way people are going to look at you is going to be totally different than how they looked at you before. I don't know you, but I sense a peace that's coming to your life. <clears throat> I sense something refreshing coming to your life. I see God getting ready to change your life around for the better. I'm going to ask Henderson, can he lay hands on you? I trust his hands. I just want him to lay hands and just cover you in prayer. Because I believe that God is going to do something for you. He's going to change your life. I want y'all to do something. I want you to begin to give God praise in this sanctuary. As God shifts some stuff. Come on. We serve one God. Yeah. That's what we do. Come on, y'all. We got to get out. But I need you to praise them right now. I feel 
feel the wind of God in this room. Come on. Y'all about to get restarted in here. For peace. Praise the Rachel. There's peace coming to y'all. There's peace. Now you go ahead and praise him. There's peace. He said, I'm giving you a clean slate. Praise him, Kendra. There's peace. Praise of Kashana. There is peace. You ain't got to live there no more. your palms, I want you to wave them in the air. Grab your palms. When they shouted out, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were saying, Lord, save us, save us. But now that we're spiritual beings, I want you to shout out, I'm successful. I'm worth it. God is amazing. God, we love you. Thank you for saving me. 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 Thank you for saving me.
you to try to find your seat. You gotta move. I don't wanna hold you too much longer. Kashana, can I? I wanna say something to your son. That's your son, right? I wanna say something to your son. Yeah. I wanna say something to you. I don't wanna put you on the spot. I, I want you to um, begin to like speak to your inner man, okay? It's almost like I see you, you're trying to hide yourself in so much. You don't want to be, you like you don't want people to see you, you don't want people to hear you. But this next few moments and months of your life, I want you to begin to speak to that inner man in you, okay? I want you to begin to tell yourself. I want you to do something else that I tell my, my son. My son, Caden, has dreads, too. I'm not against dreads. If I could have them, I would, but my mama won't let me, okay? I want you to start taking your hair out of your face, okay? I want you to see who you really are. I tell my son this because he hides himself through his hair. Your hair is your strength. But there is something that God is gonna do through you that you can no longer hide in. You can't mask this stuff. I want you to, you understand what I'm saying? I want you to find a way. I know it's a style, but it's also a spirit that lingers in us where we can't identify who we are. God is gonna let you find identity in yourself. It's going to let you know who you are. You're going to be able to start to feel something greater in your life. I see it even in, like, you you talk down on yourself. Do you? You don't talk down on yourself. This spirit that creates, like, I'm feeling like I can't do, but you can. You're so great at who you are. You are an amazing young man. And I want to tell you that from this pulpit. You are an amazing young man. If nobody ever tells you that you are a jewel and a gift, I want to be the first to tell you that you are a gift to your family. You're also a gift to yourself. But in these next couple of months that you are on this earth and that you are getting ready to excel in great things, I want you to speak to yourself and tell yourself that I can make it. Tell yourself that I am God's child. Tell yourself that I am who God says I am. I tell that little boy, man, come here, Caden. I want you to stand beside him for a second. Come here. I want you to hold his hand. You know, my children are, are, are prophets. They are a gift. And Caden told me yesterday, <clears throat> day before yesterday, Deacon Evans, I was having a conversation on the phone. And I began to speak down upon myself. And you know, Caden yelled out, Daddy, you ain't no fool. You can't say that about yourself. And I realized that life and death was in the power of my own tongue. Because I was beating myself up about something. And my son spoke strength into me. He spoke peace into my life. He spoke favor into me. You're only holding the hand of one that's speaking into you right now. And he don't even know. The children are going to lead this next phase of our ministry. That's all I wanted to tell you. I just wanted to tell you this, that you can't mask up what God is getting ready to do in your life. You might not see it now because we're children, right? I didn't believe it when my parents told me that I'll be preaching. Look at me. I got a word every day for you, amen. If we can have church every day, I'll have church every day and give y'all a word. Y'all wouldn't come, but I'm just telling you, there's a word in you. There was a word in you. There is a prophet that is going to raise up inside of you. And you're going to begin to tell your mama, I see this. And I hear this. And she's going to be able to communicate in the spirit what God is going to do for you. That's all I wanted to say to you. Thank you. I want us to transition. getting ready to move. We have to get out of here. We're going to do this quickly because we have to be out at a certain time and I know 
we like to linger. And so I don't, I don't do this to kick y'all out, but we move swiftly because our next church comes in and they have to have sound check in, they have to set up. And so we'll transition. I want us to get a seed in our hand. If we can get the closest thing we can to $20, 20. I do put a number on giving purposely because it helps. Someone that wants to join the church today. Are they here? Let me make sure. Nikita. Who's Nikita? Nikita. Okay, hey. Come on. We want to, we gonna take you in today too. Come on, y'all. Wow. And today is your first time with us. Now come on, y'all. Celebrate her. This is what I'm going to do because you said you wanted prayer. Okay, those that are giving your seed, I want you to gather those seeds. Come on. I want to ask if Elder Cheryl, I'm giving you so many titles. Come on. But the, the Holy Spirit elevated you. I didn't elevate you. We're going to get your information. We already got that. But I want her to begin to pray for you and those things that you are in need of. Come on this side while we're giving those things that you're in need of. While y'all giving y'all seed, come on, I want you to begin to prepare that seed. If you're giving cash or Givelify or Cash App, I want you to come now and sow it. Turn me around, place my feet on a solid I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because He healed my heart. He changed my name Forever we are not the same I thank the master Come on, if you're sowing that seed, I want you to come now I thank God I'm just talking, singing while y'all come on If you're giving my cash up He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on the solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, cause he healed my heart, changed my name, forever we are not the same. I thank the master. I thank the Savior, I thank God. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. I'm just worshiping. I am free. Come on. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. Any free people? I am free. Because he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground. Because he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground. Because he picked me up. And he turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground. I thank the master. Come on, y'all. Stand to your feet. I thank the savior. I thank God. Hell lost another one. 
Who is that other one, Mother Maji? It's me. Hell lost another one. You thought she was going to die and go to hell, but he gave you new life. Hell lost. I am free. I am free. Because he picked me up. Come on, y'all stand to your feet. Turn me around. He placed my feet on a solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Cause he healed my heart. Changed my name. Forever we are not the same. Cause he picked me up. We have another young lady that wanted to join the church today. Come on, y'all. Turn me around. He said, I add to the church daily. Such a soup. He said, come on, I need y'all to give God a praise for what God is doing in Fountain Worship Center. Listen, we're getting ready to go. If you see any trash, I need you to pick all trash up as we exit out here. We want to make sure that the church is clean for those. Thank you to our online audience. We love you all so much. Thank you for worshiping with us on this Palm Sunday. Thank you, Minister Lawrence, for giving us that word. Let me give you these instructions. This week is Holy Week. I'm putting the church on a just, I want you to not drink any sodas. All right? I'm going to have to do this. I want you to, starting today until next Sunday, I want that to just be water. You can eat food. All right? Let me give you the instructions. But there is something that God is going to do through our bodies, and I want you to drink nothing but water with your foods, okay? Nothing but water. I know. Nothing but water. No sodas, no juice, any of that, all right? If you can refrain from coffee and tea, but I want you to drink water. If you're going to eat a meal, I want water to be your intake of liquids, all right? All right, can you do that for me this week, starting today until we gather next Sunday? That is a very small um, request of a fast, all right? It's reframing from that, and I'm going to give you why the Lord just gave that to me. He told me this morning that I need you to tell the people to drink water, all right? There was getting ready to be something that happened. And then I get online, and Bishop Hudson preached about, about it, and I said, God, you're confirming what you're telling me, all right? There's something that happens in water. I want you all to know that's biblical, all right? There was something. The Samaritan woman, I'm not going to preach today because I got to go, all right? She was somewhere else, and she drank up that water, that well that never run dry, all right? There is something that is going to happen in your body, but it's going to happen through this water, all right? There's a cleansing that is coming in the spirit that is going to happen even spiritually through water. There is an affection in somebody's body, and when you drink up this water this week, God is going to clear up that infection. This is a deadly infection that you don't even know is laying dormant in your body. But the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is going to clean this up in the spirit. And you're going to sense a change. You're going to feel a change. But this is something that is internally destroying you. And you don't see it. It's laying dormant. But it's going to rise this week. But if you do what the Spirit of the Lord said, you will not be overtaken by what's going to come into your body. There is also somebody that's dealing with heart problems. And the Holy Spirit said, if you drink this water this week and you abide and be obedient, he said, and I will cleanse it and I will take care of it. I will touch your heart in places. I will touch your mind in places. I will touch your body in places. And I will even touch your spirit in places that you didn't even know. But everything that happens in the heart also happens in the mind. So I'm going to restore your mind, said the Lord. And I'm going to bring you clarity so that your heart will be able to be the way that it's supposed to be. Receive you the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you said and done. We thank you for how your spirit moved upon us this week. Father, let this be a glorious, holy week. Father, we're going to do what's right this week because the whole world is doing it. And so we want to be a part of what's being done in the spirit. Father, touch us as we go forth and do what you have called to our minds and our spirit. Go with us. Be with us. Don't let us lose what we gain today, but let this be a groundbreaking season for us. Let this be a blessed season and a favorable season in Jesus' name. As we go from this place, but never from your presence. Be our God, be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and go in love.
Is this... This is... Praise. Testing one, two. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our youth pastor preached from the subject of what's all that commotion about, huh? <laughs> if you want to know more, you got to tune in. No, I'm just playing. He, uh, he talked about bringing God, bringing us peace, and how he's coming to set us free and deliver. Thank you, Minister Corey. We thank each and every one of the viewers that have tuned in today for our youth service. It was a dynamite service. And I really pray that everyone that was here left a different way. And those who are, wasn't able to be here can fill us through the um, online service, but our youth pastor talked about God is bringing us peace, and he's going to keep on shaking that foundation until we get what we need. So this week, our pastor is putting us on a water fast along to eat with our meal so that he can work some things out of our body so we can align with God. So you had a good serve. Great. Awesome serve. We're going to talk to some... Minister Naya Franklin, give us some feedback, what you, what you felt today. Because you was giving them a praise today, honey. You was cutting the rug. Was I cutting the rug? You was cutting the rug. <laughs> Church was amazing. Church was good. Um, every Sunday is amazing, but the presence of the Lord was definitely here on today. Um, it was a lot of deliverance, breakthrough on today. Um, and peace is definitely on the way for you. That's right. And we got two new members. Man, we are growing, and we are excited. So if you want to come join, you got to come see us. Meet us next Sunday. We got, oh, Lord, we got her over here, evangelist. She, got a, she always camera ready. Lord, have mercy. Who else want to come talk on this mic? Somebody, we, I'm going to call you out. All right, hold on. Y'all missed it. Whoever won't hear, you missed it. Oh, my baby's birthday is today. She's seven, y'all. Tell them your name. Liliana. Yes, that's my baby. Oh, yeah. We're, I'm cutting cake for her downstairs in the lower level. Those who want some cake, some birthday cake to celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday. Awesome, awesome. Let's see who else I can get. Pastor, you talked out? You talked out, Pastor? Come on over here, because he can bring peace to you. Peace, I give to you. He's not. Yo, today was amazing. Yo, we always have a good time at Power Worship Center, man. It's literally a loving atmosphere, free to receive. And, you know what I'm saying, just to give our all and our energy to what God is doing in this church. And I'm just grateful for the people that are here. We're getting ready to get out of here because we got to go get ready for our uh, Fountain North Campus. So, look, if y'all on here, y'all can join us at 5 p.m., and worship vibes. Let's go vibe out. Go change your clothes. Go put on something nice. And we'll be there. Corey, sing us out. Let the church say amen. Say amen. God has, God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Meet us at 413. East Gray Street, West Gray Street, I'm sorry, one of them streets. Meet us there, you'll find us. Peace out. <laughs>